about his views on a few things. Sex before marriage. <laughs> but it's all right, he said, as long as it doesn't hold back the ceremony. <laughs> yeah. He is the sort of guy, serious as he is, that laughs at adversity. <laughs> especially when you ask him to spell it. Yeah. <laughs> he recently discovered his own very personal tree of knowledge. It was a bonsai. <laughs> when Rodi was... When Rodi was a student in the divinity in Edinburgh, he was a very humble student and he really didn't have many farthings to rub together. <laughs> and the only way Ruadi had of getting home was by hitchhiking. Now Ruadi is the type of man that leaves very early in the morning when he's going hitchhiking to avoid the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, by the group, Reverend Ruadi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> now, there's some food got to be served up in a wee while, so I've been called on, as a man of the cloth, <laughs> to say grace. <laughs> so, let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> on what we are about to receive, could the good man above Help us to eat what is to be put on the table in front of us. After what I saw being cooked in this kitchen here today. <laughs> Help us to get through tonight. Without the doors. Yeah. 
shelves, my shelf, writing room, <coughs> four walls. Sexy Lexi, for small shelves. In fact, Jesse Lexi got two one hell of a fright tonight. The first fright came from the best man told us I'll have to be careful of I I've got an election coming up. <laughs> Here we are, Vadis. Nach an der Show agraut, he? Nach Schiebe, wo der macht der Vierchen, he? Pachule Roskalet, die hat der Schoss Teutscherak ne Kalle gestern. Table invitations, if you don't mind. Too. You two will be raking it in. Mind you, ahead of much. Haluko less. And now you're seeing what we're doing here. Crack Pyrex dishes. I was special offers us a hoop. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think you'll agree with me. Don't the bride and groom make a lovely couple? Mind you, the bride on herself makes a lovely couple. <laughs> no, no. No, no. I must... Go and talk to them. I must say... I must say... The two of you look a picture, yes. Not a picture you'd hang up on the wall, but never mind. Well, Levad, you're every inch the bride. <laughs> a vision in, in green, if such a thing is possible. <laughs> I was... Not to a coy trim. Mind you, an uncle damaged. Now, be is a strain at Miss Mary of Sweden, a guest. <laughs> Now I can't go with a clunge and ping at an elastic horse a bit too you. I guess now who's a gala to who the G.S. Houtain? A groom? Well, what can I say about him? Well, at least he's turned up. Can you? Oh, 
no, nicht. Maddy herself will tell you it was quite a struggle to get him up to the altar. In fact, it was quite a struggle to get him out of the pub. Oh, but no, Heramich, we're all very pleased to see you making a very honest woman of Maddy. Which, if nothing else, will cut the call, your travel expenses down my home. No, that one won't move unless she's on 37 pence a mile. <laughs> Even for her, her to spend a penny costs a five. <laughs> oh, no, all I'm saying is it's very nice to see the two of you tying a knot. Actually, I was a bit worried about Maddy. She's been on that shelf so long that another two weeks should have been... Marked down, reduced to clear. <laughs> Nist. What do you think of dress in the mountain? <laughs> Figure of elegance, you see. Well, Misha, there you see how well proportioned. Ke Erams, a shakach ne bag, I was jogging bottoms, and I'll still be all woman. <laughs> No, and it's just said to myself, my usa has a lexi, because we not brides make a brides make a jeruag. Well, get a good alapa horn hushak, you're going to be the belle of the ball. <laughs> Mind you, and you may fight in more in competition as they are shown. <laughs> I've got an elasticated waist that can hold on to a Oxendale. <laughs> oh no, all jokes aside, I was very chuffed to be asked to be Maddy's bridesmaid. Oh yes, we go back a long way. She must smudge the gas machine's Maddy, you see. That one could sink a battleship. <laughs> oh, you see. Oh no, we go back a long way, you see. That's in the skunk call, like you see. Oh, it's a new class. Mind you, Mad is a few years old. She was kept back a couple of years. <laughs> oh, no. Being so that she is going to be on a whole weekend, you see. I was mad at her, so I was looking to the whole, you see. Better talent up there, you see. Oh, yes. Dock du dränger båda nog tracks hos ko. Peter Nilvo och de ruja sig. Och those were the days. Och there's no way like I used to chase on the mania down. Kina kan det vara det som faller mig ett hårst. Men hinns du hena? Gentle breeze, oh gentle breeze, yes, kan jag blå in your hair. Breathing in the sweet perfume of summer. Me hins to hain a fall of us on long walks, he has been flatter. In our night, he's in our Wellington's torture. Hasn't the indoor toilet taken all the romance out of life? Det var det att dra på och skriva från en womans son problem page. Dear Marjorie Proops, what do you do when a boy wants to go too far? What's too far, Ossa Misha? Well, Ossa Misha, Balavan is too far if you've only got a lift for you. Oh, you see. Boys, you see what a mystery to us then. Oh, yes. Foreign territory, Macabuch. Uncharted waters. Mind you, I took you in a fat top of fine you the navigator, eh? Oh, lovely memories. In Bekela, you see, was a great place to be. Down sitting in a gym. Oh, a fun. And you'll hear in your York, you. And you'll fun a year, which she and a. Drugs as designer beers. Oh. <laughs> we were innocent young things, Evalyn. Oh, does she ask enough as a good quarter bottle? Cahu 
the fellow so jealous is on the dance little run. So you just a quarter bottle. Well, usually not a half bottle. I was twenty players my that John Scully pricing the tins. <laughs> oh, oh no, the place was buzzing in those days. You see, it ain't you, you know. It are come by my clouds. I was no Watson's. I was no soldier. Then of course, <laughs> sergeants messes, officers mess. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, but nobs can learn my horse by the vanish and know that. Nisht, if you could get your hands on one of them, you are made. <laughs> Sergeants, you see. Oh, not that we were one to look down on the private, see that. <laughs> no, nisht, nisht. Oh, Mr. Valley, that's all behind you now, now that you've gone for a Norman. <laughs> she career girl and the maddie, you see. Oh, yes. I can see her going all the way to the top at the call. Yeah. Mind you, she'll probably be discovered and have to go all the way back down again. <laughs> oh, no. Actually, she's achieved a lot. She's even managed to get them pavements and gaithenish. <laughs> yes. Any day now, they might actually realise what they're for instead of walking in the middle of the road. <laughs> oh, no. And only down the road, the road, Scully and a clutch. Oh, no. Mad is responsible for all of that. Yes. You'd see her every Saturday helping the boys with the cement. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. She was very good with the bricks. Bricks, dear, I said bricks. <laughs> I should the metal ho gossipy God only knows the stories that we'll be doing the rounds. <laughs> Vadi, they said you were one of the best layers in town. <laughs> of cement! Oh, a riff raff a stay show or no? <laughs> oh no, I better finish off now. I can see that the best man's getting very excited. <laughs> You surprise no cast, I'm telling you. <laughs> so all that remains for me if Ben at Paisha go host. Slange of and Shako. May your marriage be like the best of them, short and adventurous. I guess I'm a dog as a heramash knuckle and noon damage jack as a fine source in a flag. Ladies and gentlemen, will you all be upstanding for the happy couple, the bride and groom? Hesse, Lexi. 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 I think I should just fill in for a minute or two. There's a message here. Message from Project Ninjal and Garlic. Norman's mother was looking for him today on the phone. He says, he's usually up there. He didn't leave a note. He just went. I'm afraid he's gone back to Venezuela. She said, <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, no, not tonight, did I? He's up in Cheese Ocha. He's up in Eust. And, he, and Ben Pecula, and here we are, there's a little message. It's in Gaelic. Some of the law who to on a fine sepen come of Valach and Oak. Some of the Vixona is a Mogoi, Haramach a Lui, Nach Posu. Yev Migut bent on a Nuish to chess, Che Voyoch Rain, and Savel chess. Blah as a yappy. 
Bangkok, Venezuela, no Gary of Art. Halikusulas, Tulig, a visual scahach, Vermari Vacrua, Lutza, a love, a Hanamachaloi, Naposu. Jo Akush and you, a heart and doy, a penur a lorok, and Valachanok. Can you sure no rage or no sleeper, no pog? After it can a yappy, Viacra a boss. Let's go to the piano for Project Ninjalan. I should have a rhyme with the piano. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have the pleasure of listening to the groom's reply. Everahen Segunuashir, Ladies and gentlemen, I must begin with an apology. I've had a very busy week. On Monday night, I was in Canada, uh, addressing a meeting of gay and lesbian single parents. At <laughs> On Wednesday, unfortunately, I had to go, as they say up here, I had to go up south to Dalabara, <laughs> where I uh, was uh, addressing a meeting of newly released violent prisoners from Porterfield. <laughs> so, for those of you who are hearing me for the third time this week, uh, <laughs> sincere apologies. Uh, Uh, accustomed as I am to speaking at weddings, my own mostly, uh, <laughs> being a kind of serial bigamist, uh, uh, I still find it quite difficult to, to express myself and the affection I have for uh, 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 I first met, I first cast an eye on my bride in Inverness. Inverness, where they talk the best English in Britain, but no other beggar can understand them. <laughs> I was walking past uh, McDonald's, and I saw this big woman <laughs> sitting on two stools. I guess Ganis me hin karoichi. I'm a sausage kehostraichel. And I was so excited, I didn't know her name. I said, Listen, big fat woman. I said, uh, How would you like to go for a meal with me? What would you like? I guess I could say who's Chelsea shit. I guess I'll have sirloin steak. I said you better guess again. You'll have been there. So <laughs> ah, could you hook me go to pee, Madame at the Niller niche? Ah, the one the sochpia. No, this was a, a, an Italian restaurant. You know the kind of ambience, very dark. A lot of uh, Callum Kennedy tapes on the kitchen. <laughs> and it was a disaster because I thought she had a, she, I thought she had a clegg on her face. It was a beauty spot. <laughs> and what really annoyed me, she turned around to me and said, I had a match. No, man. You make me feel good. <laughs> Norman, you know this, the way that I feel with you, I've never felt this way in my life with any other man. Norman, why don't you run away with me? It was all me, me, me. I hate that stuff, you know. <laughs> so, but eventually I, I took her out to the BMW. Oh, I don't have any BMW, I can't. Skoda Felicia. 
but I've got the letters printed on the bonnet, you know. <laughs> and we went back to this uh, hotel, the Cummings Hotel. <coughs> and this is the bit about 10 o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. So I get quite excited because I wonder if there's going to be open drop. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I wonder if there's going to be any sex. <laughs> And I wonder if I'm going to be involved, you know. <laughs> no, I hate watching it, it's a hellish embarrassing, you know. Because <laughs> you, we got to the flat and uh, uh, I, I carried her over the threshold. <laughs> no, a lot of people think it's very romantic. But uh, you try and carry mad you over the threshold. <laughs> I was bouncing off the walls. <laughs> I had carpet burns on my knees. <laughs> I'm a wimp. <laughs> and she's a blimp, but anyway. <laughs> we got in and uh, I got down to it right away, folks. I'll be honest with you, mostly all voters here. I come, the thing on the heat, and I must say I was moving really well, you know. <laughs> I was getting really right into it, and Maddie came in from the kitchen. <laughs> Let's draw a veil over this. Uh, but eventually I got her into the bedroom, and uh, I must say that uh, I, we both acquitted ourselves very well. Because I'm good in bed. I am. I never fall out of bed. I've got one of these special beds with the iron rails up the side. I got it from Craig Denain the last time I was in. <laughs> but as I say, this is not the first time round uh, for myself. Maravis, I could have done you leave this paper than me on the Thailand divan. Oh, what is that to you, man? See, the thing was, the circumstances that led to my going to Thailand, I had received a ticket, you know, a very cheap ticket to go to Thailand. And it was cheap because there were three changeovers, two of them in mid-air. But uh, <laughs> and, uh, of course, the fatal error, it ara titter class of us lunin, yummy smooch a coffee, you know. <laughs> and the thing was, by the time I got on to the Thai airlines, I was speaking fluent Thai. <laughs> and they understood every word I was saying. I was very grand at him who's. I was pretty sure. Ruok. Now, I knew she was kind of the varotic in me, has the macho. You know, this red headed wig and the, the Kraschen Puyer and the Sulan Kuko, you know. So, you can show not reach it, you know. But uh, I'm a nice fellow and uh, I'm a skull crack no more. I guess I made me wrong. You could use horse me, dear. Hello, I said, damn Taramat. I'm green and he's been back, you know. I said, hello, my name Pong, come from Bangkok. I said, really? I said, I'm an entertainer on television, Postman Pat. <laughs> Some smiley. I said, what do you do for a living? She says, oh, me, I'm paralegal. I said, oh, yeah, you can't walk. What have you done? And something weird happened, you know. The plane dropped like a stone, 300 feet in 15 seconds. And suddenly the voice of the captain came on. You know, these taxi drivers of the air. Goodness gracious me. <laughs> this is your pilot, Padaj, I'm talking to you. Listen, we're having some trouble with engine number three, but please don't worry. We have a fire in engine number three, but be not worrying because it will be put out momentarily <laughs> by the Indian Ocean. <laughs> and then the wee lassie from uh, 
Ceylon from Colombo, she got up, oh, well, you think I need to show, could you show I show up? Vipe the eye. When I need to talk about the result, I guess I dress to me that she's a lexi. Vafrokor, I guess you can hear in this Havori, listen. And I don't want to inflame the senses of the young athletes in the place. But she was gorgeous. She could walk into Hollywood. We're talking here bronze, amber skin. We're talking rich black hair cascading in a neurodescent river of onyx all the way down to her town. <laughs> We're talking carmine red lips framing large, white, glistening teeth through which from time to time a plump tongue protruded. Sorry about that, I was... <laughs> she went into a rap as well, and she was really very funny. You know, she got up and said, Ladies and gentlemen, goodness gracious me, please do not be panicking. We are having a little bit of trouble just now, but in the event, in the event of a crash into the Indian Ocean, please assume the survival position. <laughs> Was moet je dan? Zelfs moet je trouwt. Wat is de survival position? All gentlemen, please place their heads between their legs. Gee, I come half. If I could do that, I wouldn't leave the house. Ha ha Marahus me have the post of Marha and actually it just shows its testimony to what a fine fellow I am that my first wife Marta Echta from Skidevak in Lewis actually phoned me last night. And uh, she's had her ups and downs since I last saw her. She's now living on the Polygon, and she was very amusing. She was telling me that, Oh, Haramot, I've just come back from Spain. It's a wonderful place full of Spanish men. How <laughs> strange. And she said, the first day I was there, I went into the swimming pool in my Harris Tweed bikini. <laughs> and as soon as the water touched it, it fell apart. <laughs> and there I was doing the side stroke. And my Kia and this trailing along behind me. And uh, all the people were pointing, and I thought they were pointing because I was such a good swimmer. <laughs> uh, and now, Norma, I want you to know, I hope you'll be happy along with Maddie because she's one of your own, and uh, our thing didn't work out, but I've settled down a lot. I said, so, Oh, well, the thing is, I'm staying with my mother in Polygon and back, and uh, I'm doing relief teaching. I said, that's good. I said, where were you working? He said, well, I was working in Laxdale School a month ago there, and oh, I had these four, five-year-old girls, you know, and I went in and introduced myself. I said, my name is Marathe, I'm deputising for Miss Morrison today. And this little speech act put her hand up, and she said, Miss McKeever, our real teacher, Miss Morrison, doesn't do subtraction sums that way. <laughs> and I said, really? <laughs> and then the next thing, she puts her hand up and says, Miss McKeever, our real teacher, Miss Morrison, she always lets us play in the afternoon. I said, really? <laughs> and she said, Miss McKeever, our real teacher, Miss Morrison, is much prettier than you. <laughs> so Maratheta told me what she said. She just turned around and said, Miss McKeever's dead. <laughs> These five-year-olds are going to counselling now, you know. <laughs> and then she told me she was sent to the Nicholson Institute, a fine school. You can't lift up a paper without reading about it now. It? <laughs> and she had these boily boys of 16, vats of boiling hormones. <laughs> Terminal acne. She said it was horrible. First day I walked in, I said, Hello, I'm Miss McKeever. I'm deputising for Mr. MacDonald. And this fumade, this big giant of a boy said, Miss McKeever, Mr. MacDonald always let us drink alcohol. <laughs> I 
can't smoke on label cigarettes. I said, really? I said, Ms. Mac Mr. MacDonald, you know, he was a good guy. He always let us do what we wanted. I said, really? I said, and I'll tell you another thing. Mr. MacDonald, our teacher, he was a lot better than you. So, Maratetta went for experience and said, Mr. MacDonald's dead. <laughs> I said, I know we stopped him last night. <laughs> And she was telling me, folks, that she's for the the mad, and she's not very happy there. The mother's over in hospital in Vernessius now. No, not Rig Moore, Craig the name. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> and she said, terrible thing happened to her. How much last night? Eleven o'clock at night, or quarter past. Jeremy Paxman had just said good night. <laughs> And he said, I was just going into the kitchen, all the lights went off, and I knew with my imagination what had happened. It was the mad rapist from back. <laughs> he had come in the porch and put off the electricity at the mains. Oh, here, and then I looked out the window and I saw Tia Hapchen and all the other houses in the village, they had lights on. No, they didn't have lights on. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, oh, here, and I hope he starts at this end of the village. <laughs> She's also, she was telling me that uh, uh, on the eve of my, my nuptials, as it were, that uh, she was very unhappy with her mother because her mother uh, was one of these manipulative callers, you know, who keep saying to her, uh, Maradetta, you're spoiled. When I was a young girl, my brothers taught me how to swim by taking me out in a rowing boat in Loch and throwing me overboard. That's how I learned to swim. <laughs> Marat had said, Mother, don't be silly. That's the one time to teach you how to swim, you have would. I suppose when they fired the 303 rifle, they were trying to teach her to evade bullets, you know. <laughs> and uh, the other thing that she was talking about, her mother, was her mother is terrible against the television. She can't watch television. In fact, as soon as the Kaya comes home, she says, Could ye mark a non shashit? battery. Put it off. There's nothing on television but sex, sex, sex. Gets right up my nose. <laughs> Maradetta said, Mother, maybe you're doing something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have to worry about doing something wrong tonight, ladies and gentlemen, because my own Marata, Nian, and is Yen Hani, in a Shruid, a kid, and is. She has impeccable credentials. Do you know that she is vice chairperson of policy and resources? She is chairperson of the social work committee. She's a member of the arts and leisure committee. She's a member of the development services committee. She's chairwoman of the personnel subcommittee, member of the performance review committee, a member of the Garrick development committee, Member of the Crafting Committee, Member of the Fisheries Committee, Member of the Joint Liaison Committee of the Council to, and the Health Board, Chairperson of the Joint Consultative, Consultative Committee for People with Disability. That's reassuring, right enough. <laughs> She's a member of the APT and C Staff Committee, a member of the Manual Workers and Craftsmen Committee, Chairperson of Crack Common Gaelic, Chairperson of European Bureau for Lesser Used Languages, member of the he Healthy Islands Partnership. <laughs> like that one of that, a nice one. Now, who you? <laughs> member of the Highlands and Islands Committee for the Employment of the Disabled. Uh, very gratified by that little piece of information. Member of the National Joint Council for Local Authorities, APT and C Scottish Council. Member of Western Isles Tourist Board. Member of the Appeals Committee for School Placings. Member of the Children and Panel Advisory Committee. Member of the Housing Benefit Review Board. Member of Western Isles Licensing Board. We were married at three o'clock this afternoon. She had a window. But the consummation of the marriage looks like it's going to be a millennium project. You know? <laughs> Thank you very much. Admin, 
of the comedy curly gang. <laughs> The next toast of roast by Gerhard. I'm going to call on the Reverend Ruhle. Reverend Ruhle has the onerous task of toasting and roasting the two lovely bridesmaids that have. Supported Mary, and that's no mean task <laughs> for the duration of this great evening. Reverend Rowan. Are you all starting laughing before I speak? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. How does this thing uh, move up a wee bit? There we go. Now, I've been told to toast the, the lovely brides. No. <laughs> Bridegrooms. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Reverend Rood, he might have a wee bit of a dahusha. <laughs> Too many. But anyway. Was it bridegrooms I've got to toast? Uh, the bridesmaids. Oh, bridesmaids, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, gee, Marshall. Sexy Lexi. <laughs> That's a word I've never heard in my church. Sexy. But anyway, if you took the collar off. Anyway, before we go for that one, I think we should all, because tonight's been a. You've all enjoyed it, haven't you? Yes. yes. But instead, the bride and groom, the, the groom, his talk, his, he didn't say much about who was taking away tonight, did he? But anyway, I'm going to say a few words as a man of the cloth. So, please, could we all be serious for a moment or two? Who laughed last? Please, we are, you know, there's times we've got to be serious. Tonight, may the man up above us look down on us tonight as we pray for this couple who we have joined in holy wedlock. <laughs> no, please, no laughing. Pray for Mary as she heaves her heavenly chassis <laughs> Please, I said, could we have peace and quiet, because <laughs> as Mary heaves her heavenly chassis <laughs> under her lusty stallion, Taramat, <laughs> that she gets what every woman wants. <laughs> and if she gets what every woman wants, <laughs> that we will hear the patter of tiny feet coming from the McLean household in years to come. But also, as I look around you all tonight, we pray if Norman does not rise to the occasion <laughs> that Viagra will be available for him on the NHS. <laughs> God bless both of them. Amen. Amen. No, that's. We must know. I must do the duty I was told to do by the <laughs> MC. Everyone, be upstanding. Oh, I thought that was my glass. <laughs> Sorry, I 
from the minister or the whatever. Everyone upstanding, the bridesmaids. Reverend Sir, Bride and Groom, Cross Dressing Transvestites. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the full and certain knowledge that an erudite audience such as yourselves at this time of the evening looks forward to the next speech in the same way as a lamppost looks forward to the next passing dog. <laughs> I shall be brief. It is my pleasure to reply on behalf of the bride's maids, sex unknown with one of them, <laughs> the gorgeous Ches Chessy Lexi, the be only bearded bridesmaid in the Western world. <laughs> And it's just my luck as best man to land with a bridesmaid half of feet in the tarav. <laughs> I hope that you as an audience will um, not treat me in the same way as the last time I spoke in Ben Bekela and I turned to the chairman halfway through my speech. And I said, I hope I haven't spoken too long, to which he replied, oh, not at all, he says, it helps to pass the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the groom whom you have heard, I am no speaker of any substance or quality at all. And to prove that to you, let me quote two things. When I was speaking elsewhere and I heard somebody saying, I wasn't meant to hear it, but I did hear it, and it, he said in a loud stage whisper, Maclean has done for the English language 
what brillopads have done for hemorrhoids. <laughs> Yes, indeed, said his neighbour, but he suffers from nothing that lockjaw wouldn't cure. <laughs> now, there are many duties which fall to um, a best man, and I think that I ought to share with you and ask you to share with me the sympathy and heartfelt feelings which we feel for the poor man who this day has lost his dear wife to another man. <laughs> now, Robert, if you would be kind enough to come up near the stage, I have arranged as a replacement, normally it would have to be a very large replacement, obviously, <laughs> but nevertheless, I have arranged for a replacement bird for you, eh, Robert, and if you will just come, I will pass him to you. Me? Yes, Robert. And in case you get any ideas that you are going to get Chessie Lexi <laughs> or the beautiful bridesmaid beside her, let me assure you that Chessie Lexi is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> paroxysms of jealousy from the reverend on my left hand side. Control yourself, Reverend, control yourself. <laughs> However, having lost your dear wife, Robert, let me give you a replacement bird. <laughs> and if you just listen quietly in total silence, <laughs> the bird, Robert, is all yours. <laughs> I think you as an audience, and any audience is entitled to know the sort of person, or at least something about the person who's speaking to them, and in the course of um, my existence in a previous life, I was in the city of Glasgow Police, and if there is one person who's extremely popular with the police in Glasgow, it is Sheriff Irving Smith. Now, Sheriff Irving Smith has never in his life been known to find anybody not guilty. He has never imposed a minimum sentence when the maximum was allowed, <laughs> and he has never fined anybody when he was allowed to send them to prison. <laughs> and the first time I appeared in Sheriff Irving uh, Smith's court, let me hasten to add as a witness and not as an accused, <laughs> uh, there was a very serious case in front of him. It's a simple breach of the peace, in fact. And uh, the sheriff looked over his glasses as only Irving Smith could, and he said, uh, I find you guilty, which was a foregone conclusion anyhow, of course. <laughs> and he said, unfortunately, the death penalty has been abolished. <laughs> However, I sentence you to hang by your neck until you're very sick. <laughs> I know that the um, police are frowned upon in some quarters, 99.9% .9 of the whole country. Nevertheless, they do occasionally rise to the occasion, as I hope the bridegroom will do this very evening. <laughs> and a policeman who came from South Uist, believe, went to the hospital because he had dislocated his shoulder. Now, I am no doctor, but I am told that the only thing you can do with a dislocated shoulder is to push it back into place. I'm sure there's a medical term for it, but I do not know it. However, he was in the treatment ward in the accident and emergency unit and uh, he was yowling his head off in pain and agony when the sister came along who took one look at him and said, oh, for heaven's sake, calm down. I've just come from the labour ward and the lady who gave birth was making an awful le le lot less noise than you. And he just took one look at her and said, ah, yes, but you try and push it back in, though. <laughs> A fair number of telegrams, and I think it's only right and proper 
that I should start with the one from Her Majesty the Queen. Hamihin, Hamihin, I guess a duke could melog neer could have a de la vora show. I guess a dog was Cassadivich leave. I guess a bishop mar Eschen Plesva and a Palachak and Heen Terlhoch, I guess Edward. Ella said Philip, I guess Nacorgis. Then the next one is from 10 Downing Street. Dear everyone, my Gaelic is not very good. A haramet agasavadi, remember Madi, a wedding day is like an election campaign, a lot of frantic activity, and a great climax when the results are declared. <laughs> That was from the Right Honourable Tony Blair. From Callum MacDonald, Minister at the Scottish Office, this wedding could only happen under new labour. The happy couple have suffered 18 years neglect and have been left to go to rack and ruin under the previous Tory administration. <laughs> Mel of Callum MacDonald. Now, anybody here who has travelled on McBrains and suffered from food poisoning, and there can only be very few who haven't suffered from food poisoning if you've had anything to eat in McBrains, there is a telegram here from the Chief Steward, George Loney, Councillor George Loney, who is the Chief Steward of the Hebridean Isles. Congratulations on your big day. Don't let your honeymoon, honeymoon be like the Hebridean Isles. Roll on, roll off. From um, British Regional Airways, or British Ridiculous Airways, as they're usually called. <laughs> Mary, Mary, are they all in white? That's their first mistake. <laughs> we send you best wishes on this, your big night. We hope you will be happy and all will go well. We dropped you down badly, a tale you can tell. <laughs> on that fateful flight to Stornoway Town, our wheels went adrift and our bottoms fell down. <laughs> we bumped you quite badly and now we are sad. Please multiply quickly or your claim we can't add. <laughs> our company logo, BRA, is our name. No boobs will be covered if you expose our shame. Endowed with such greatness, please hide all our faults, our cups and our straps our quality choice. The papers, they blame us for all that goes wrong. Lord Maclean of Lochmadi, he leads them along. <laughs> Henceforth and hereafter, we won't get it wrong. The bra it has boobed, but not for long. <laughs> From Cunyach Moor, a haramet, make sure you give the bellows plenty of air. That will give you the puff and help Mary reach for a move as harsh to for a Valodian Cunyach Moor and a P.S. to the best man, may you be an arresting sight and to the bridesmaid, may your beard be well hidden, may your bumps be in the right place, may your randy Dan be well pleased. <laughs> and from the Social Work Department in Stornoway, care of the elderly division, a word of advice to the groom and the bride, we've found you the honeymoon suite. The best man for the night will act as your guide to make sure it's a consummate feat. <laughs> From the Eerskad and Gdimusay, Kum to hul and tuntje, Kum to gloon and teucht, Kum fat skat and vooye, spitu all right. <laughs> The next one is from the Independent Republic of Scalpe, <laughs> which is presided over by Councillor Donald MacDonald, known to one and all as Gaddafi. <laughs> and he says, and it's in his own fair hand, as regards the telegram asking you to come to Gloon and Teucht, all I can say is that in knowing you, Mary, for nine years, there is no chance whatsoever of that. <laughs>
the next one is from the leg and it's um, Norman at the side and each letter has an explanation opposite it. N is for Norman, my love and my boy. O is for organ, his favourite toy. <laughs> R is for rhythm, his way is so grand. M is for music produced by his hand. <laughs> A is for admiration, for him I have got. Ends for the notes from his pipes he has wrought. Many congratulations from the leg. <laughs> from, from the Dark Island Hotel in Lienaclet. May your marriage be like a chicken supper. Plenty of breast, plenty of leg and lots of stuffing. <laughs> and also bride radio in at midnight if the aerial is still standing. <laughs> Congratulations and best wishes. Next. One from the Director of Education in Stornoway, Neil Galbraith. Congratulations. Your first mathematics lesson, subtract clothes, add bed, divide legs and multiply. <laughs> From Lewis Carpets, from Lewis Carpets, congratulations. Carpet delivered next week. You can have your underfelt tonight. <laughs> from the body shop, as you sink in his arms tonight, remember, he'll soon have your arms in his sink. Not the body shop. From. Um, Lewis Offshore, if you don't strike oil in ten minutes, stop boring. <laughs> From Murdo Murray, the Director of Technical Services, keep the stork from your roof, shoot it in the air. <laughs> From Donald Mackay, the convener of the Western Isles Council, may your honeymoon be like a council desk, all legs and no drawers. <laughs> From Alistair Nicholson, the SNP candidate for the Western Isles, I hope the event is memorable and that your union is better than Scotland's. Best wishes to all, Alistair. One from Alistair Morrison, the Labour candidate for the Parliament in Edinburgh. Blessings on your union and may one of you very soon be in Labour. <laughs> Next one reads, O oh Norman, how I envy you, a lovely bride whose love is true. You picked yourself our very real trophy, just think of me, I've just got Sophie, signed Prince Edward. <laughs> Forget the SNP and Tories, but do make sure that Mardi tells no stories. Robin Cook. <laughs> From the Lochies. A little message for you, Mardi, don't ever sing Gurthrow Mahami. <laughs> From the Chief Executive of the Western Isles, Brian Stewart, congratulations to the bride and groom from all of us here at Cornell and Shear. Can I take this opportunity to respond to an inquiry recently received from the groom? Unfortunately, we do not think that the Cornish uh, cast you scheme is applicable to the particular circumstances <laughs> of, your, of your marriage. Well, I've heard Mary Bremner referred to as many things, but I've never heard her called a cast you before. <laughs> Next one. Well done indeed. Congratulations to the bride and groom. P.S. Don't worry, Robert. You'll get her back in the morning. Katriana, Alec and Scott in London and there was a donation of £10 enclosed for the football team in that particular card which came by post. <laughs> oh. 
One from Councillor Alistair McCrae uh, and his wife from Stornoway. Sorry we can't be with you on your big day, but here's hoping that your garter will be the only thing with the teeth marks. <laughs> Love and best wishes for your future happiness, Alistair and Catherine McCrae, and I should say that Mr and Mrs McCrae give a wedding present, a very good wedding present of uh, sheets which we will be auctioning later on. They are quite expensive one and it's extremely kind of them to have sent this. I'm quite sure you would agree. <laughs> because she likes to give her views, Marge is always in the news. Her wedding photo, you can bet, will no doubt be in the Gazette. Best wishes from the Gazette staff. And the second last one is from a mugger in Venezuela. <laughs> Norman, here's a message, mate. No doubt you're looking really great. You are a truly smashing guy. Sorry I gave you that black eye. <laughs> And finally, from President Clinton at the White House. <laughs> Have a happy wedding day, although I'm many miles away. But, Mary, there's one thing I'd stress. Please destroy that wedding dress. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the telegrams, and at this stage I was going to do the auction, but I think you've heard this voice for long enough at this stage. I am to make a second address in the second half when our other friends will have arrived, and I think it would be better to uh, do the auction at that particular time. So I think now, if my boss will allow it, is now the interval, am I right? Yes.
Ha sho ma ka di jo ha. Ye don good for. We want to bring to your attention at this stage that, as I was saying, I do think it's only right and proper that those who have arrived since we last spoke should be made aware of the fact that there has been a successful surgical operation since I last stood here, and that is to tell you that Chessy Lexi is now male. <laughs> and certainly, if you have the advantage of knowing me, then it is certainly an advantage, and I would only tell you one thing to identify myself, and that is simply, when you leave the police after 30 years, you are entitled to look at your own record over the years, and I took advantage of this, and on the day I retired, the very first entry in my file was, and I read it exactly for what it said, whoever recruited this man into the police service deprived some village of its idiot. <laughs> function tonight is not for uh, any speeches of any great length at all, but merely to draw attention to the fact of the efforts that have been put in by certain people for the football matches which are going to take place. I don't need to tell you a tremendous amount of hard work that has been done both behind the scenes and publicly by Donyard in response to this. by Donyard but by other people as well and I would specifically mention Rhino who had who recently had cause to go to the doctor and he said to the doctor doctor I want my sex urge lower the doctor said what at your age it must be in your head to which he replied, yes, but I want it lower. <laughs> before, um, before you arrive at the conclusion that I have a speech impediment, the nature of which is that I cannot stop talking, <laughs> let me tell you that one of the most difficult jobs in the world apart from doing a waltz with Chessy Lexi. I now, know, I now know how the Red Army felt when they were defending Stalingrad. One of the most difficult jobs in the world is to get money out of Corn de Manila. However, uh, both Mary Bremner and I have managed to do what very few other people have done, and I have here two checks, one from Mary Bremner and one from myself uh, from Corgan Island, and they're both for £250 each. Yeah. great pleasure in asking Donya to come forward and accept these with all our best wishes. There are 
also some other monies, and I don't need to give you the details, but they did have collections and the stuff in store. We have called them Nilan. This was Mary's doing, and she managed to winkle 132 pounds out of them. We had. Fifteen of the thirty councillors uh, in uh, Stornoway, those who are present, contributed. There's fifteen pounds from them, and finally twenty-five pound odd from the um, staff at the Balavanic office. I'm sure it would be your wish that we would say to Donya, to Rhino, to all the rest of them who have been involved in this, thank you very much for your efforts. But it's not just for today that. Uh, uh, these things are happening, it happens around the year. And just before I finish, let me tell you one more item about Rhino. Rhino's not just a fundraiser for um, this sort of thing, he is also the Arts Development Officer uh, for the Southern Isles. In connection with this, he has of course to take a deep interest in art. And I was with him when he visited the Tate Gallery in London. And after admiring the pictures, art to uh, Rhino who is wont to give his opinion fairly freely on matters like that, took one look at a picture which we were passing and he said to the attendant who was with us, another monstrosity of modern art, I suppose, <laughs> to which the attendant replied, no sir, that is a mirror. <laughs> I can tell you that the wedding presents will be auctioned later on at another function to raise more money for them and if any of you should have any loose money flying around, and as I look round the chamber, there are plenty wealthy people here, you know where to direct it to the footballers, and I understand that in return for your generosity in buying your tickets and coming, that one of the young footballers, Paul McInnes, now wishes to say something, Paul. I'd just like to thank you for all of you coming. Uh, the Martin football team, a big thanks to the top table and the guests, to Annabelle and the bar staff. I'd like to wish Shona McLeod a happy 16th birthday. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you all have a great night. Okay?